Today's Bible reading is taken from James chapter 3, verse 1 to 6. James chapter 3, from 1 to 6. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. In a, if any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to brittle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, and are driven by few winds, yet they are turned about with a very small helm, whithsoever the governor listed. Even so the tongue is a small member, and boasteth great thing. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindled, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defied the whole body, and setteth on fire the cause of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Thank you. The Bible reading continues from verses 7 to 12. For every kind of beast and of, and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs? So can no fountain both yield salt, water and fresh. Here ends the Bible reading. The caption for this morning meditation is Tongue Five Important Truths. I have been reading this passage all through this week again and again. And I don't know what I was going to share with you. But very clearly I was able to see five important truths, Bible facts about that time. Very briefly, with the help of the Holy Spirit, I am going to share with you these five biblical truths. What we shall find in these twelve verses. Verse 1 and 2, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend, hear a fall. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to burdle the whole body. The first truth, let not your religion make you a teacher. Let not your religion make you a teacher. In other words, don't use your tongue only to instruct, teach, advise others. Does it mean that we should not instruct others or advise others. Verse 1, my brethren, be not many masters. It's, many times I have heard people giving an interpretation. No, all of you should not desire to become pastors. Then God's condemnation will come upon you. If you read the previous chapter and the following verses, it speaks nothing about whether you are becoming pastor or not becoming pastor. Coming into the ministry 
a pastoral ministry or evangelical ministry or whatever that ministry may be that is based on calling it's not based on your desire so here it doesn't mean that you are becoming a teacher by calling then what does it mean why should we get into greater condemnation i was reading this passage again and again i was getting what other saints are talking about it because certainly if i read chapter 1 and all cha- i'm sorry chapter 2 and the rest of the verses in chapter 3 it doesn't say anything about the ministry especially the ministry of teaching in the bible there is no special ministry called teaching ministry a teaching gift we read about we read about the teaching gift but when you say ministry pastor and teacher is one ministry every pastor must be able to teach then what does this passage actually mean with reference to the context it doesn't mean that or it does it doesn't forbid us in directing others in the right way it doesn't mean about telling our stu- children what to do what not to do a pastor showing the way of god from the bible or parent showing the way of god from the bible or helping your friends it doesn't talk about it but in the reference to context especially when he talks about tongue many a time the condemnation comes upon us because we use the tongue only to instruct others only to teach others the husband uses the tongue to tell what tell the wife do this don't do that and wife tells the husband do this do that parents tell the children do this do that this is right that is wrong but do they follow because it says we offend all in many areas we fall and falter a wife who has got a lot of pitfalls how will she instruct her husband a husband who has got a lot of pitfalls how will he instruct his wife this is a mistake we all do a pastor who doesn't keep up the timing he instructs others to keep up the timing how you all must be in time so this is where the condemnation comes upon it's not becoming a servant of god or doing a teaching ministry so when i was meditating to help you in three areas where we all offend we all make mistakes we err and fall we stumble and fall and i love to show you those three areas area number 1 because we offend stumble and fall with regard to the disposition and intention of the heart by nature all our heart is wicked the bible says we can't say no no my heart is very holy by the disposition the heart is wicked and our intention of teaching others the intention of teaching others mostly selfish motive selfish motive but a good teacher instruct others to do something with an interest of helping that person 
and some of the volunteers or some of the staff when they come late, even by a minute I tell them, I'm not losing anything because you are coming late, but that affects your character. That affects your character. So that instruction, the motive, is not my self-interest. That motive is educating that person. See, one sister was very sincerely praying for the salvation of her husband. Her husband was a drunkard, not going to the church regularly. In all fasting prayers, in all prayer requests, she was praying for the salvation, but that man was not getting saved. One day in a very vexed mood, she told the pastor, Pastor, I don't want to come to the church. She said, what's the problem? Everybody coming as husband and wife. I also want my husband to come, to go with me to the church. I'm praying and praying and praying, he's not getting saved, he's not coming to the church. He's not going to the church with me. I don't want to come to the church alone when everybody was coming as husband and wife. That pastor said, am I very sad? Your husband will not be saved. What pastor? Yes, your husband will not be saved. Your intention is that he should be saved and go to he heaven. That's not your intention. Your intention is, he should be saved and going with me, going with you to the church. Your intention is different. You want to go to the church as a couple. Your intention is not that he should go to heaven. So that passed in a very rude way, he said, your husband will not get saved. Because your intention is different. My dear brother, my dear sister, Your intention is, my son must send me money. Whether the husband and wife they fight or they don't fight, my son must do this for me. My brother must do this for me. I don't worry what he will do for his family or not. My brother should do this for me. My wife must do this for me. Whether there's a problem for her or not. So, all, mostly, where we offend others in our instruction, our disposition and intention of the heart are always evil. Are always evil. So, be careful when you are teaching others. Be careful when you are instructing others. You want your boy to be a good boy. Why? What's the intention? Your son to be very goody goody, very affectionate to you. What is the intention? What, are the, what does the Bible say? You leave the father and mother and cleave to his wife. That's what the Bible says. But you don't allow that. You don't allow him to leave you and cleave to his wife. You want, you want him to be attached with you, you want him not to leave you. Then you give some teachings. You will be condemned with hellfire. You are a Christian or no Christian, doesn't matter. Whether you are baptized or not baptized, it doesn't matter. Whether you have got Holy Spirit or don't Holy Spirit, no Holy Spirit, no matter. But you shall be condemned because your intention is selfishness. So even you teach against the Bible, you honor your father and mother. You think that you are teaching the word of God, even the devil will teach the word of God. You think they are teaching the word, you must honor your father and mother, that your life must be long on this earth. You don't mind whether he fights with his wife or not, whether he takes care of his children or not. You are very happy as long as he takes care of you and you give instructions for that. Maybe with your husband, maybe with your wife, maybe with your children, maybe somebody else. You give a lot of instructions, but intention is wrong. We have to be very careful about it. And number two, 
the internal employment of mind it is slowly associated with the intention our mind our thought process it is born out of that intention my intention is that my just to take the same example my son must help me my son must be attached with me till my end my son should take care of me my son should not uh, let me down that's your intention now the employment of mind how do you employ your mind from that only your teaching comes the schemes how do you plan how do you work out some programs how can you influence his mind how can you get time alone with him you want to talk to him you can't go and tell him don't care for your wife don't care for your children you can't say like that he would become rebellious don't cannot don't forget your mother see all this i have done for you some way you have to reach him i'm just taking it one illustration so that you can understand the chain of thought so the intention is that he should not let you down then your mind you employ your mind you work on your mind towards that intention can you see that so the employment of mind also is evil we all make mistakes so how can i give this say you want to talk to the boss how can you give a reason so that he could accept you want to tell your wife you employ your mind use your mind how can i tell her how can i tell her in a way that she could believe it how can i put it across the employment of mind so there was a short story the husband was in love with some other woman and it came to a situation that he should marry her also so one day he went and talked to his wife in a very loving she i will never let you down i'll always be with you i will take care of you i love you i see all your comfort now he is employing his mind preparing his wife to say that he was going to marry another woman she was very patiently listening to after all blah 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 all soap and all finally he said see i am in a very critical situation you alone should help me promise me that you should help me this is employing your mind promise me that you should help me and all she is listening to it finally he said see i am in a critical situation that i should marry her she said don't worry about it i also wanted to tell you and it's all god's divine plan i am going to marry somebody working me in the office i was wondering how can i tell you it's better that you came out with that see what a wonderful couple she met i am also going to marry so and so i was just waiting to tell you so our words even affectionate words loving words at evil 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 because in your mind you work out all those loving words for evil things the daughter will go to the mother mummy mummy oh 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 all those things finally will say i'm going for a birthday party with my friends she knew very well that mother would not like it can you can you see that how do we use our words me mummy mummy that's because of there is a, a evil design in your mind 
outwardly you show very lot of affection just preparing the ground to let loose your evil intentions and number 3 so number 1 our intention number 2 the employment of the mind and the result of that how do you communicate how do you put across your thoughts to the other person so with this basis because we have we all make mistakes in it smaller way or a bigger way if the intention is not wrong your mind will not employ wrong things when your mind will not employ wrong things you will not communicate wrong things so when we all got this weakness when we instruct others when we instruct our children now you must be good children you must obey your mother do you obey your mother you must obey your father do you obey your father we all must be punctual to school are you punctual to work are you punctual to the church who are you to instruct others what capacity you have got what right you have got to instruct others when you are not doing those things your intention is evil you make evil plans and you communicate evil words with all sweet coating then how do you go and instruct others have you got a moral right to instruct others that's a big question that's what he says don't become teachers don't become instructors don't give advice to others set your life straight first when we instruct others knowingly or unknowingly we make three mistakes you can also make a note of it number 1 we think that we are the standard we think we are the stand not to make this point clear it so happened that i am wearing a half sleeves not because of that one day one sister she was attending a particular prayer fellowship run by a, a saintly sister about that sister a sister from another church said they all wearing full sleeves oh she is backslidden when she was with us she was wearing full sleeves now shamelessly she is wearing half sleeves so for this sister full sleeves is the standard and the sister wearing half sleeves she is talking about somebody else she you know she doesn't have any shame standing in the front lifting up hands and all worshiping wearing a sleeveless blouse so somebody wearing full sleeves or oh, too much that's all fuss wearing sleeveless oh that is wrong i am the standard my style is the standard so many a time when we become instructors we don't say what is the bible stand we make our life a standard this is right 
wearing too much of jewels oh that's all wrong we should not wear jewels like idols we need not remove jewels that are too much of us we need not remove jewels so what do i think the way i am wearing is right anything apart from that is wrong this is where the instruction comes many a time we make our life standard we have to be very careful about it this is where we all here i am the standard what i do is right and the second mistake we all make we think that my life is exemplary my life is a model in many churches i've seen what is the standard of that pastor the believers in that church follow that standard so many a time we think that we are setting an example not only we are the standard we are an example for for others to follow and number 3 when we think that we are perfect these are the three major reasons we are the standard we are the exemplary our life is exemplary and we are perfect naturally we instruct others but we often we stumble and fall in many areas so we have to be very careful not to get the condemnation i love to show to you matthew chapter 7 from verse 1 to 5 matthew chapter it's a very uh, popular passage you all will be knowing it is in the sermon on the mount jesus said judge not that you be not judged you are right you are wrong this is bad this is good when you say this is bad and when you do the same thing you are judged you yourself judge you that you will not be condemned with the world judge not that you be not judged for with what judgment you judge what the yardstick you have got what's the yardstick you have got in correcting others with what judgment you judge you shall be judged with the same yardstick you will be judged you are saying oh that sister is wrong oh that girl is wrong you got a yardstick to say she is wrong with the same yardstick you will be judged your daughter will be judged so here it says with what judgment you judge you shall be judged and with what measure you meet what is the yardstick you have got what's the yardstick you have got this is how she can dress somebody can show the back only 6 inches if it is 7 inches it's sexy if it is 5 inches it is very fussy what rubbish it is what is the measure you have got how do you make that measure with what measure you meet it shall be measured to you again what's the standard you fix with the same standard is fixed for you verse 3 and they beholdest thou the more that is in thy brother's eye the more that is in thy brother's eye but consider us not the beam that is in thine own eye what is that you are looking into oh she is doing like this oh she is doing like this i know some women especially some women those who spoke a lot of blah 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 about others they all are suffering bigger blah 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 in their lives with their children with their daughters with their families within a small amount of track history 
I will be able to say what all they talked about are this. So when you cannot see the mo uh, the beam in your own eye, why do you worry about the mole in your brother's eye? Chapter verse four. Ah, uh, how will thou say to thy brother, "Let me pull out the mole out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye"? Okay, I'll help. You. I'll pull out the mole in your eye. Hey, boy, there is a beam in your own eye. Set your house in order first. Set your life in order first before you could help somebody else. Before you could help somebody else, clean your house. When you can go and tell somebody, I'll clean your house. Verse five, thou hypocrites, those who don't consider about the mole in a uh, beam in their eyes, and those who want to help the people with the mole in their eyes. Jesus is calling them hypocrite. First, cast out the beam out of thine own eye. Cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then, and then shall thou see clearly to cast out the mole out of thy brother's eye. So here, don't become masters. Don't become teachers means. is that the ministry before you could teach others before you could tell your neighbor what they should how they should bring up that child what you should do to bring up the child first bring up your child properly before you could tell others my dear brother my dear sister matthew henry says let us learn to be severe in judging others but charitable in our judgments of other people we are very severe in judging no no let us learn to be severe in judging ourselves but charitable in our judgment of other people any of our judgment of others be lenient be charitable don't Give a lot of blah blah teachings, lecture bodies, instructions, and all. Give a row. Everybody will make a mistake. Everybody will make a mistake. I make mistakes. I should be very severe in judging myself, in correcting my mistakes. I must go to heaven. I must be very strict in correcting my mistake, but charitable, kind, loving in our judgments of other people, our judgment on other people. That's what Matthew Henry says. My dear brother, my dear sister, we have to be very careful about that. and lesson number 2 or the truth number 2 in verse 2 the second part for in many things we offend many things we offend behold we put bits in the horses mouths that they may obey us and we turn about the whole body verse 4 Behold also the ships which though may be so great and are driven so fierce winds yet are they turned about with a very small helm whither so ever the governor listed the second thing let your christian nature control your tongue your tongue is not a desire to instruct others first you get a christian nature let your christian nature control your tongue he gives two examples number one bits in the horse's mouth a small bit with a rein 
the horseman he is able to control the horse the horse is able to take him in the proper direction it's all with a small bit which is in its mouth like that as the reins are controlling the small bit let your christian nature that should be the rein and the horseman the holy spirit he is controlling the horse that is our life that is our life so when we learn when the spiritual nature the christian values obey your husband run away from youthful lust honor your parents leave your father and mother and cleave to your wife the bible principles when that govern you were speaking you are instructing others when the christian nature begin to govern your intention the employment of your mind your communication then the horse will go in the right direction your course of living will be in the right direction similarly another illustration he says uh the ship ship is very great the be so great and driven of fierce winds driven of fierce winds and they turned about with a very small helm you may have seen a small rudder to come that uh crew will be holding this small just with a width of less than 100 feet less than 100 feet a small uh like a steering wheel that's what we use the word hem of our fires small hem very small the ship is so great the hem will be just uh one foot uh, less than certain less than 100 foot 100 feet the crew is able to control then the ship will go in the right there whatever the fierce winds may be similarly let god let holy spirit let the christian nature let the bible values the bible principles control your life then whatever the fears wind may be will be going in the right direction whatever the situation may be you will be going in the right direction the same thing in psalm 39 verse 1 the psalm is says i'll keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me the fierce wind the wicked the false accusers evil people that is the situation we will we will also be out of control they false accusers we speak back fierce wind we lose control our carnality will begin to work and i am a person and evil nar na porthu yolna daniyayatha porukkum let the holy spirit come and take control when you sit before the wicked especially when those who speak evil those who speak wickedly aniyayama pesranga let the holy spirit come and take control put the bridle in your, uh, in your mouth it doesn't mean that you should not speak speak what god wants you to speak he directs you the devil is an accuser he is the accuser of brethren sometimes the devil will come upon your wife when god can jesus can says peter satan get thee behind me i don't say tell your wife satan get thee behind me but satan will influence your wife she will accuse you 
It's the work of the devil. I think the husband will accuse the wife. It's the work of the devil. Mother-in-law will accuse the daughter-in-law. Work of the devil. He's the accuser of brethren. When you are sitting before wicked people, put the bridle in your mouth. The bit in your mouth. Let the Holy Spirit hold the reins. He is the horse rider. His values, his words. Control your behavior. Especially when you are sitting before the wicked people. And especially when the sea is rough. When there are fierce winds. Let God take control of you. You don't come out of that control. Even so the tongue is a little member. It's a very small member. It's without bones. A very small member. Even though the tongue is a little member. If it doesn't control by the Holy Spirit, it will boast many things. And behold how great, no matter a little fire kindleth. My dear brother, my dear sister. So principle number two. The Holy Spirit should take control of our tongue. What we speak, what we say. Especially when you are with the wicked people. Especially when the wind is fierce. When there are evil spirits, four winds from four corners are blowing against you. Problem in the house, problem in the work spot, problem with the family, problem with parents, problem with the children. Your health is failing. It is like a cyclone. From all corners you are oppressed. That time, all the more, the Holy Spirit should take control of your time. What you speak, what you utter. Because that's going to design the whole course of your action. Your whole body will be controlled by what you say. And number three, we have to be aware of one great dreadsome danger. Dreadsome danger of the tongue. In the latter part of verse 5, Behold, look, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Small uh, flame, a spark that could kindle a great fire. Verse 6, And the tongue is as a fire. It is a world of iniquity. So is fire, tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, your whole personality, and setteth on fire the course of nature. What is going to take place next? What is going to take place next? What is going to take place in the future? The whole nature, it will, the words that you have spoken, will set the whole course of nature in fire. And it is set on fire of hell. Finally, the tongue is also set on fire in hell. All because what you said, all because what you instructed, all because what you spoke, the whole problem has come. Basically the whole problem is what you spoke. Especially what you spoke to the wicked people. They are wicked. They are worldly wise. They are demonic. They are accusers of brethren. Diabolic. But you don't know how to handle your tongue. You didn't allow the Holy Spirit to take control of your tongue. You wanted to speak what you thought it is right. My dear brother, my dear sister. It burns the whole course of action. In Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 6 Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. 
neither say thou before angel that it was an error wherefore should god be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thine hand you have done so many good things with your hands you have done so many good things but your words have destroyed them all many of you would agree with me you have done so much for your wife so much for your husband you made a lovely biryani shedding tears shedding sweat shedding shedding blood huh? you're shedding tears when you are cutting onions shedding sweat when you are by the side of the stove shedding blood when you are cutting the meat huh? with tears with blood with sweat you made a lovely biryani and your words destroy the work of your hands a small quarrel a small fight he could not enjoy the biryani your words have destroyed the work of your hands my dear brother my dear sister i remember one tirukural undanum teechal undanum teechal porul payan undayin a evil word you spoke that has caused an effect undanum teacher or ever evil word one evil word a wrong word purut bayan undayin it caused some effect nandaha dahi vidum all good things will become bad all good things will become bad undanum teacher பொருட் பயன் உண்டாயின் நன்றாகாதாகிவிடும் எவ்ரி திங் தட் இஸ் குட் வுட் பிகம் ஈ பிகாஸ் தேர் இஸ் அனதர் பாப்புலர் திருக்குறள் யால் வில் பி நோய் தீயினார் சுட்ட புண் உள்ளாறு மாறாதே நாவினார் சுட்ட வடு எ வேர்ட் தட் இஸ் ஸ்போக்கன் கேன் நாட் பி ஈஸிலி கியூர் that wound that has caused you can't be ji bumba be healed it will not be healed so we have to be very careful about it my dear brother my dear sister a little communication a contentions very violings some slanders you speak about somebody they are like fires your lies after you have spoken that slander i got a lot of example to say i don't have time to explain when you let loose those words even when you want to correct you won't be able to correct it i given this anecdote earlier a man spoke something about a pastor he did not about it he spoke a slanderous thing he spoke about the past it started spreading then only the man came to know that what he spoke was wrong the man came to know what he spoke was wrong so he went to that pastor one morning it was a nice windy day he went to the pastor and said pastor i'm very sorry i spoke such and such things about you and i know that you also heard about it please i am extremely sorry please excuse me etc the pastor was not saying anything he took a piece of paper and he was going on tearing that piece of paper shredding that man twice or thrice he told that pastor pastor please excuse me i you know intentionally i thought it was true i said that pastor was not at all saying okay i forgiven you and nothing you were just going on tearing that paper the fan was in full swing and there was wind outside at one point of time he took all the small bits woo he threw it in the wind so some papers even through the windows it went away the wind also carried away some papers and all that man lost his peace said pastor i am asking you to forgive me you are a servant of god 
When I say forgive me, can't you forgive me? He said, no, there is no need for me to forgive you. I have already forgiven you. But for you to get peace, for you to get forgiveness, do one thing. Bring up, pick up all these papers and bring it. What pastor, how can I pick up all the papers? It's all gone in the wind. He said, now you can come into my room and say sorry. But the evil you have spoken about me, that has travelled. A to B, B to C, B to D. 1 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 8, 8 to 16, 16 to 32, it is travelled. How are you going to collect it back? How are you going to stop it? It is going viral. What you have spoken. I have forgiven you for, on my part. But on my part, I have forgiven you. But how will you get forgiveness? Can your heart say, okay, I have said sorry. So everything has become all right. You are the main cause for this news to, news to spread, become viral. My dear brother, my dear sister, this is like a wild fire. You have to be very careful. One word sorry is not going to stop that evil. When I was preparing this, I have taken verse from Shakespeare in a play called Cymbeline. A character, Pisanio, uh, he says, it's slander, it's slander, whose edge is sharper than the sword, whose edge, slander, whose edge is sharper than the sword whose tongue outvenoms all the worms of Nile. The poison of slander is worse than the poison of all the snakes of Egypt. All the snakes in river Nile. The poison of slander. You speak easily about others. How can you escape condemnation? Can just one word sorry will excuse you? One word sorry is not going to excuse you. It outvenoms all the worms of Nile whose breath, the breathing, whose breath rides on the posting winds and that belies all corners of the world. The breath that comes out of the nose. It rides on the posting winds and belies all corners of the world. The slander has gone to all corners of the world. The wind has taken it to all corners of the world. How can you say sorry and oh everything is well. I have said sorry. It's slander whose edge is sharper than the sword, whose tongue outvenoms all the worms of Nile, whose breath rides on the posting winds and death belie all corners of the world. Kings, queens and states, maids, matrons, Nay, the secrets of the grave, the viper slander enters. Slander doesn't leave kings. The slander is about kings, presidents, rulers, pastors, leaders, kings, queens, and states, people with position. We take it in a church atmosphere. There are slanders about the pastors, the slanders about the pastrama, and the slanders about the uh, presbyters of the church leaders, or the Sunday school superintendent, or the youth leader. We take the kings, queens, and states. Maids and matrons, the little meaning. There are slanders against young girls, spinsters, not married. And there are slanders against matrons, those who are married. There are slanders against leaders, there are slanders against important people, there are slanders against unmarried persons, there are slanders against married persons. Nay, the secrets of the grave, this viper slander enters. Not only with the kings and the queens and the states, 
not only the spinsters and the married even it talks about the people those who are dead slanders don't even leave the people those who are dead what a poisonous thing that slander is it's a fire if you don't control your tongue you are setting the world in fire so fact number 1 don't try to give instructions to others before we could set our life straight fact number 2 your words your tongue must be controlled by the holy spirit especially when you are sitting before the wicked people when the wind is fierce and if you don't control your words you cannot say by mistake i have spoken it your words will destroy the work of your hands remember it put it as a golden text my words will destroy the works of my hand the lovely biryani you made will be spoiled by the quarrel you have picked up the lovely dress you bought for your wife will be destroyed by the quarrel you picked up the works of hand will be destroyed by the words of your mouth and number 3 the words are very dreadsome like a fire a small spark just a small slander a small hurt that could spoil the whole course one thechol if that can make an effect on others what all good you have done everything would become bad so you have to be very careful about it and number 4 fact number 4 can i control my tongue okay i decide to control my tongue from today onwards no no natural man can tame the tongue no natural man can tame the tame the tongue That's what verse seven and eight we read. For every kind of beast, and birds, and of serpents, and of thing in the seas. These are the four in the animal kingdom: bees, birds, reptiles, marine life. The four is tamed. dolphin they tame they play with dolphin you can tame fishes they are playing with snakes serpents the bees even lion elephant they are able to tame them birds they tame birds even huge big birds when we visited a bird sanctuary there was a huge parrot is easily more than 3 feet a wild fa- parrot the sharp beak and all and the claws are very fierce the sanctuary tender said so you can show your hand that parrot will come and sit on your are you i was scared don't worry sir it was very fierce about 3 feet a little more than 3 feet with all fear i showed my hand with all its claws it came and sat on my hand and he put some food in my in my hand without any pain to my body it was able to pick up the food Then I don't know how this could leave my arm. He said, "Just do like this; it will go." The whole feet was very heavy, also at least on five or six kilos. I just did like this; it flew away. They are able to tame eagles. They are able to tame doves. My dear brother, my dear sister, but the Bible says. you cannot tame 
the tongue. Back, 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 back. You and I cannot tame the tongue. Nobody has succeeded. Nobody could succeed. Maximum you can put a plaster. That's all the maximum you can do. And when you remove the plaster, later will be worse than the former. Many a time, after listening to some wonderful messages, the wife decided, let him say whatever he say, I will not keep my mouth open. She will hold her mouth tight for some time. He will be going on accusing. Then she will start praying, praying within. And the third step, praying little out, Stotra Andavari, Stotra Andavari, Stotra Andavari, Stotra Andavari. Then there will be Bible quotations. Andavari, Daniel in Devan, Singhath in Vaya, Kattina Devan, the Manishan in Vaya, Kattu Mandavari. That prayer will become quoting Bible verses. Vaya Klitschuru Mandavari. Stotra Mandavari, Stotra at that one point of time, the stotra mandal will stop, the dam will be opened, that man will become quiet afterwards. <laughs> See, our self-effort, they all got limitations. The Bible says very clearly that no man would be able to control his own tongue. We need the work of the Holy Spirit. And the fact number five, to save time, I go quickly to fact number five, verses nine to twelve. True religion or Christianity cannot allow this contradiction. What is that contradiction? Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith we curse men which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth Blessing and cursing. My brethren, brothers and sisters, my brothers and sisters, these things ought not to be, these things should not be. This hypocrisy should not be. With the same mouth, blessing and cursing. It is impossible, it should not be. Death a fountain sent forth at the same place, sweet water and bitter, it should not be. That may be okay with the people of the world. They are demonic, they are diabolic. All evil within you. Sometimes the evil will come out. Sometimes a pretense and sweet water will come out. Sometimes the evil inside Words of blessing, words of cursing will come out. L listen carefully. Evil inside, demonic, diabolic, from that the two things may come. They are not, the diabolic, the sweet words is also a result of diabolic. Can you see that? That love and affection is also a diabolic word. Oh, I love you very much. Oh, I pity for you. That's also diabolic because it's a diabolic inside. So, even diabolic inside, sweet and bitter water may come. Sweet and bitter water may come because it's evil inside. That sweet is pretension. It is an offspring of that evil within. Oh, I love you. I live for you. I can do anything for you. All these things very careful. There is some evil behind it. There is some evil behind it. But, when it is totally good within, no evil can proceed. You can't say about pretension I speak evil. No. When it is totally good, Evil cannot come out. When it's totally bad, apparent good as a pretension may come out. But when totally good, apparent pretending evil will not come out from good. It's not vice versa. If you are totally good, only good will come out. If you are totally Christian, Christ-like nature, Christ-like nature must come out. The evil is coming out. 
pray unto the Lord. Confess your weakness. Ask God to take control of your tongue. Verse 12, can the fig tree, my brethren, bear all you berries, either a wine, fig, so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh water. Christian life, it is impossible to have this both together. The true religion is not in instructing us. Your true religion, your true Christian commitment must be able to send forth the Christ-like nature. As we considered last week, the honey and milk. Because of the fullness of your heart, your mouth speaks. Let there be honey and milk out of your mouth. My dear brother, my dear sister. So James chapter 3 from verse 1 to 12 we are able to see five important facts or truths about tongue. Number one, with evil intention within you, when you also fall short of many areas, keeping you as a standard, don't try to instruct others. Certainly it doesn't mean two things. Number one, it doesn't mean about the ministry of teaching. Number two, it doesn't mean you are helping others walking in the right path, a Christian path. But, number two, let your nature be controlled by the Holy Spirit. Let your nature be controlled by the Holy Spirit. Like a a bit controlling the horse or a hem controlling the ship, especially when you are with the wicked people. When the situations are difficult, allow the Holy Spirit to control your situation. Number three, the words that you would speak, they are not ordinary words. You must remember the fact they are like sparks of fire. It can affect the whole course of your body. The whole nature. One bad word can affect all your good works. So we have to be very careful. It will set the whole thing in fire. Then you cannot retrieve it. Then we cannot retrieve it. Number four. Then we natural man, with your own efforts, you are putting a plaster on your mouth. You cannot tame your tongue. Only the Holy Spirit should take control. How do you know that you are totally committed to the Holy Spirit? From you, both blessing and cursing will not come. From a wicked person, apparent pretentious good and bad will come out. But a good person, a pretentious bad, will never come out. My dear brother, my dear sister, I love to conclude again with another Tirukur. I love Tirukural very much. Right next to the Bible. There are very good teachings in Tirukural. Yahava Rayin, Nahak, Kavakal, Sohapa, Sholilukupat. Whether you are able to protect anything or not. Whether you can protect your wealth, whether you can protect your treasure, whether you can protect anything else or not. Whether you fail to protect anything else. Protect your tongue. Whether you can protect anything else or not. Protect your tongue. Ya kaava raayin. Yedha ni kaka mottalum paravala. Na kaka. Kaava kaar. If you fail to protect your tongue, so kaapa chollu ilukku pat. By speaking a wrong word, you will become sad in your life. You will become sad in your life. Let the angel of God. 
with a burning coal from the altar of god come and touch you at time we are living with the people with unclean lips who enters we are people with unclean lips let the holy spirit come and take control Lord, touch my mouth, my heart, my hands, my lifestyle. Before I could help others, before I could take the mole out of others' eyes, help me pull out the beam out of my eyes, O Lord. When the beam is taken out of my eyes, I would be able to see the mole in others eyes more clear shall we stand to our feet pray sincerely i know the spirit of the lord has spoken to you probably many of us it may not be a very sweet sweet message but very earnestly i tell you the lord has spoken out these words so that we can be successful in our lives one small bad thing can destroy our entire life structure odi shana maraba just take one minute those who want to pray for you pray for you young girls young boys brothers sisters is the mole taken out is the beam taken pulled out of my eyes have i got a moral right to teach others or will i be condemned with what measure i measure others with the same measure i'll be measured lord i should be more severe in judging me and more charitable in judging others the slander out venoms all reptiles in the sea of nile in the river of nile jesus praise you lord may the lord help us keep our tongue only to bless god to bless others that milk and honey may flow out of our mouth will